Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is our market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Wednesday, November 6, 2013. We had kind of a mixed day today where we had uh, kind of weakness in the broad market with the uh, S&P and the Dow both being lower on the day. But we had a, we had a little bit of a bump up in the uh, in the Nasdaq futures. So all in all, kind of kind of just a flat flat day with uh, not a lot to show for it. Uh, I think the one thing to really uh, focus your attention on, though, is the uh, the market internals. Today, the uh, the market on the broad market side was lower, and we we're on minus uh, about 1,100 issues on the New York Stock Exchange. The uh, Nasdaq uh, market was up, um, you know, a couple of handles on the day, but the uh, net issues were lower by 400 on the day. We also had a bearish uh, trend today, and the VIX was higher on the day as well. Uh, and when you figure into that that the uh, total put call ratio was also down at uh, 0.63 uh, indicating kind of complacency in the market uh, at these higher levels this is really internally not a very positive day at all even though uh, the headline numbers were uh, were okay so let's take a look at the uh, the major uh, futures contracts let's start with the uh, the NQs today since they were the uh, the only winner on the day all right. So uh, even though we're looking at the NQ futures, don't don't uh, misunderstand that or interpret that interpret that to the fact that uh, we're, we at trade side are uh, biased to the uh, to the long side of the market. We're not at all. Uh, we'll trade what we'll trade whatever will uh, produce us some uh, some net gains. Uh, so let's just be clear about that. Uh, here's the uh, here are the NQ futures. The NQ futures uh, were higher on the day, but uh, as you can see, we're still trapped in this most recent range. You know what this does technically it doesn't move the needle at all we did have a positive close but we're within range so that's really something that has to be built upon in the subsequent session otherwise it really means nothing we're still holding above the uh, the 10 EMA so we're short-term positive even though we're lateral uh, but we're getting very long in the tooth here in this lateral range so when we do uh, resolve this range and leave it either to the upside or to the downside we should have a pretty decent move as we spend a uh, quite a bit of time here just uh, trading back and forth in this comfort zone uh, to the upside uh, 8 ace is going to be key resistance to the downside the 7 ace level at 33.59 in combination with the uh, 10 EMA is major support support below that is uh, 33.11 which is that gap window from this little breakaway gap to the upside here moving on to the uh, the ES futures we were lower on the day but uh, like the NASDAQ uh, market we're still kind of in the, in the same range we uh, hit that 1750 level which is 8 ace on the chart here that you can see that's the the, the blue line uh, traders absorbed the selling at that at that level today and we're able to kind of just give it kind of just this little uh, doji day so we're still trapped in this recent range with uh, with no resolu resolution just yet when we do break out of this range this uh, move should have some uh, teeth to it. Moving on to the Dow, Dow lower on the day, but again, uh, still in the same basic range. Game in this uh, this 8 ace level, which has been very very dominant. Look look at it, look at it back here in August. Came into play, came into play again here in September, and now it's coming into play here even at the end of uh, October and the beginning of November here. So 8 ace level at uh, 15,625, still in play. Uh, overbought area at uh, plus 1 ace at 15,781 is next to the upside. And then this little gap window to the downside here, which we actually used today. That's today's low is the, uh, is the uh, key mark to the downside. All right, guys, this might be the most important point uh, of the... Uh, of what was kind of revealed by the uh, market today and that is the uh, the uh, total put call ratio the total put call ratio made a new low obviously for uh, for this month we're only six days into it but uh, but uh, of this whole move we're starting to get pretty close to that uh, that 0 0.5 uh, reversal threshold where there's just too much complacency in the market we definitely are moving in that direction uh, you can see this high here then we have this low we've got a lower high here and potentially a, a lower low setting up here so the market does appear to be getting pretty complacent uh, but that's fine uh, the, the, the reality is that we don't have an oversold uh, 
reading in the uh, put call ratio, which would mean an overbought reading and, and uh, overly complacent uh, type of environment in the overall market. But we're starting to definitely move in that direction. So be on top of the uh, total put call ratio for the next couple of days. If we do get that oversold reading, uh, do not go home long anything and uh, be ready with uh, some, uh, some, some aggressive short ideas. Here's a look at the uh, S&P TLT cross, made a new high on the move. So uh, investors are still putting risk on here. Uh, this isn't really kind of a leading indicator. It's really more of a lagging indicator, but uh, certainly uh, one to be watched. We've got a little bit of conflict between uh, risk being put on in this environment versus uh, that put call ratio that could be approaching uh, an overbought uh, reading. But uh, we're not there yet as far as the overbought reading. So the trend is still positive, and definitely respect that, and make sure you have uh, you know, both long and short ideas ready for the next session. Here's a look at the Dow Gold Ratio. The Dow Gold Ratio did not make a, uh, a new high on the move. It's still kind of just basing. You can see staging below that breakout. If we do get that breakout, uh, this old high here in the ratio is definitely going to be in play very, very quickly. That would be in favor of equities and uh, and we'll see a further uh, retreat out of gold and uh, gold becoming more of a source of uh, funds. All right, so here's a look at the uh, cross between the uh, oil services, which is the red line on the graph versus the uh, oil futures, which is the blue. A little bit of a bump here today in the oil futures. So when the oil futures uh, do want to uh, reverse, even if it's just a bounce to the upside here, just keep in mind there's a very, very big spread in the chart here. See the see the distance here in, in the uh, in the two charts. This is the biggest spread that we have had go back to the beginning of 2013. Since since the beginning of the year, it's even bigger bigger than here. And see how see how the oil futures um, we're kind of trending to the downside here, but oil services were still relatively strong. And look what happened to the oil futures. They eventually caught up and just exploded to the upside. So, uh, though I'd love to, love to see uh, dollar ninety nine gas at the pumps. I am not uh, at this point uh, that in love with it and ready to uh, upgrade into a larger vehicle. All right, here's a look at the multi-sector daily chart. Uh, weakness kind of across the board here. Uh, definitely the biotechs were, were really weak. Affymetrix take a, took a big hit today. Uh, Amgen was weak. A lot of the, a lot of the big biotechs were weak. Um, the banks were just kind of kind of middling here. They were really uh, better than a lot of the other indexes. Uh, the GDX was weak on the day, and you can see that the uh, the uh, SOX index was also uh, fairly weak. Potentially seeing some uh, rotation here out of this out of the uh, the biotechs into the actual SOX, which uh, which could be interesting. Uh, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Remember, we've got a kind of a double t double top in place right now here in the uh, in the socks, which does remain negative for now. Here's a look at the semiconductor index. The socks used the uh, 500 level as support. Uh, still short-term negative, being below the uh, the 10 EMA. Note that this gap though was closed today. Finally, we had this little island up here uh, where we had this breakaway gap and this l this large candle to the upside, but it couldn't really couldn't really go anywhere and that that this candle here actually this breakaway candle was the high close of this move we had the 13 exhaustion in place from the seeker which uh, indicated that uh, you know buying that gap was probably not going to be that profitable and certainly that that uh, was true so 8 ace level here at the 500 level is key support if we lose that on a closing basis we're going to wind up going uh, probably short-term negative here, and then putting this 50 DMA in place to the downside in the semiconductors. Here's a look at the HGX, which is the housing sec sector. Pretty weak today. You can see that it made a new low close on this move. Next support in the housing sector is going to be the uh, the 50 DMA. It's kind of a minor average, but it's definitely important to the overall market. And the reason I'm bringing this up right now is we had this high here in uh, you know mid to uh, about the third week of September, if you will. And now we're starting to uh, uh, have some trouble here at that same level. So we've got key support here at the 50. I'd like to set up a higher low here. We've got this low set up here earlier in August. Then we've got this area here in early October. Don't really want to see uh, this low revisited. That's really going to show a stagnation uh, in the overall economy. Here's the oil services. Still kind of inside here. You can see the triangle pattern here that's forming. We're still kind of in the midst of that. We're getting pretty close to the uh, 
to the apex of that pennant. So when we break out of this, this is definitely going to have some uh, some uh, some good movement to it. And if we break out to the upside, you want to be all over this because this is the key uh, late cycle stock uh, uh, sector. Here's the BKX, still just kind of slugging sideways here. We're still short term negative. Have key resistance here at 8A's at 65, 625. The, uh, if we do break to the downside, we're going to have some pretty decent support here at first touch at the 50 DMA. But below that, there's a lot of room here down to the 4A's level. Note that the uh, overall bias here is fairly negative, and the MACD is also negative as well. So no, no real positive momentum. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSite.